Hi, and welcome back to Chuck's Tuesday Tips. Duck reconstruction after last week's duck destruction. When you last left us, this thing looked pretty bad, but I promised you it was going to look pretty good. I went ahead and messed around with it a little bit. You know, one thing I got to apologize for is that trying to do these videos and keep them down to a reasonable time is really, really tough to try to do a job that takes so much time in, in a condensed time and keep it interesting. Okay, I'm going to sew up this incision right now. Now I talked about uh, redoing my detail with batting. I've laid my batting in here. We put the head in. We've got it, the tunneling in there pretty good, this head shape. I'm going to close up the back right now. Um, you can start top to bottom, bottom to top. There's some difference of opinion whether which way the feathers lay better. Uh, normally I do it bottom to top, but since I'm dyslexic, I apparently started top to bottom. So I always do opposite of whatever I say. Now we're just going to do a basic baseball stitch, which is kind of an over and under stitch. And take a few stitches and pull it tight. Now, you got to keep in mind that the thread is probably itself stronger than the skin. So this is not like when you're doing a mammal. We don't have to super grunt on it or really uh, suck it down really hard because, like I said, the string's a little tougher than the uh, than the skin. What I keep doing here is I'm trying to keep my feathers parted out of the way as I sew so that I don't tie them down, trap them in the, in the seam, and cause, cause it to uh, um, have like a, the appearance of a seam. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop for a second and then get our back shape nice and this will be a good example of how I add my fill. I'm going to put a little bit of uh, this fill and you don't really need a lot. You just need it to come in and just hold your skin up in the desired areas that you uh, that you want. In this case we're kind of recreating the backbone of the duck. And that's about all we need. And it really makes a big difference. Now of course a lot of guys are foam body guys that allegedly have the whole detail already carved in but again the problem I have with that is uh, the foam is very rigid they're generally run big and uh, it really takes away a lot of your freedom of getting the pose that you want you lock a, a wing bone into the foam mannequin and it's just gonna stay there you lock it into the the wood bowl or excelsior and uh, you gotta you got flexibility to get it to move move uh, around how you want it get a better shape you can see we're coming down on this seam pretty good I gotta be more honest with you guys because I don't I don't like to be full of secrets but <laughs> this bird when we were working on it man, it just you probably didn't see on the cam it ripped here it ripped there it was like all hand grenading on me all over the place and that happens a lot on ducks when you clean them because you have to get those feather quills cleaned all the way of all the fat and grease and what happens is they become almost like a perforated uh, postage stamp or something where all you got to do is breathe on them wrong and they literally tear apart 
So, you know, it always happens to me. It never fails that um, when I'm under the gun, under the camera or something, you know, something goofy always happens. It's called the 10-foot rule. My teacher says, don't mock the 10-foot rule or it can come back on you. A lot of people don't believe in my 10-foot rule curse, but apparently it does exist. So, all kinds of funny adventures happen when I'm around that wouldn't normally happen. And there we go. We've got it. I just got to tie it off. And then... And you don't even need to get fancy with your knot because a lot of times you pull a down feather in here like I just did and wham, it's sucked up. Now, I went ahead and told you that I don't dry my bird out all the way. First we got to decide which is the least bad side on this shot up bird and I think I'm gonna have it fly this way so having said that I've pre-sharpened a 10 gauge wire and I'm gonna run through my body hopefully not through my hand I bring it in at an angle here and I bring it out right underneath the wing and all I do is make a staple out of it run it back through Okay, we have to call on the strength of a thousand chucks again. Uh, there we go. And get it through the other side. And it comes out here in the pocket again. Can you see that? No? Okay. Well, trust me, it comes out in the pocket. And all we have to do is cramp it over. Now, we found a piece of wood that we're going to use. We drilled a hole on it. I went ahead and made a little hanger out of a piece of spare scrap wire. Like I said, there's no, no junk around here. So I'm going to, uh-oh. I'm going to install this. Hang on. <laughs> Always turn the phone off before you start video. There's two ways to secure your deal here. Um, one, you can put a screw right in up against your wire. And that'll hold it. But my favorite way is I take a couple screws and I put one on each side of the wire. Dude, screw bent. Good old American steel right there. Oh. Ah, ten foot rule. Always have plenty of screws for when you drop them. There. 
Now it's welded in there. It's not coming out. Now, cut this wire short. We'll hang up our bird. I'm going to run a screw through the back here just so that I don't knock off my bird while I'm working on it. Now what we're going to do is uh, make some noise, blow it out more, really get some nice fluff on it. Make sure your down feather here starts to fluff up, that they're not matted down. Now this whole process, see how these are matted down right here. Can you see that? Your hands are in there. Oh. So we're going to keep low until they unmatch. Now, this whole process takes quite a little while, so rather than bore you with all this, I'm going to basic pose this real quick, set the eyes in, pin the beak, and then I'm going to go ahead and uh, end this video with that. Finish drying the bird out, and then uh, the next episode we'll cart it all up in the final pose. Now I like to use these eyes on wire because if you m remember we carved a foam head, so we can take and put our eye right in there. I use these little insect pins. To get the tension on the eye. You don't want your eye too round. I'll go to the other side. Stick this eye in. No singing. My faithful assistant JJ is, likes to whistle while he works. There you go. Now we'll pin up our beak. Always have everything ready, you know, when you're doing this. Showing people.
<sighs> Never shoot your duck in the head if you can help it. It's an important safety tip. There we go. Now we're starting to look like something. Now like I said, the next pose uh, thing we would do is get this wing set wired out, stretched out, fan our tail feather, groom our neck, get everything just the way turn this a little bit tweak it all around and you could spend hours uh, posing your bird and grooming it and uh, this one really would have get, been a good candidate for a fake duck beak but I don't like to use fake parts so anyhow as you can see it's already starting to look a lot better um, next week we'll finish it up put that up to dry for a, a Two, three weeks before we bring Mike back in and then we're going to start on our deer feet and uh, that's going to feature my trusted assistant JJ my faithful sidekick I'm going to take him through it while someone else films and then maybe that'll uh, uh, help see the process a little bit better so thanks for tuning in we'll see you next week on Chuck's Tuesday Tips <laughs>